Hey guys, look what we have here. Everyone's favorite number two. You gotta go run into your blue boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> the poor thing's so petrified, he can't stop smiling. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Stupid little two-tailed freak. Why don't grab your little toys and run off? Why don't you stop wasting- <laughs> Get this thing off of me! Where did that thing come Get from? Off my huh? Oh my god. Oh boy, the sidekick got his own games. Are we dealing with the Mario is missing equivalent to Sonic games here, or maybe the Luigi's Mansion? Either way, Tales Sky Patrol and Tales Adventure. Let's start with Sky Patrol. Both games came out in 1995, but Sky Patrol predates Adventure by a couple of months. Though you wouldn't know that if you lived in the United States, Tales Sky Patrol was Japanese exclusive for several years before we finally got it as part of the bonus games in Sonic Adventure DX and Sonic Gems collection for the GameCube. So why the exclusivity for so long? Ooh, maybe it was like Lost Levels, they considered too challenging for international players or some shit like that, or maybe they thought the world wasn't ready for a Tales game of this caliber. Or it could be because this game is under half an hour long, plays nothing like a Sonic game, and has nothing to do with really anything. An old hag by the name of Witch Card is turning all that oppose her into crystals, so Tails takes flight to put an end to her minecart madness. No Robotnik, no Chaos Emeralds, no Sonic in sight. I can't remember where I read it from, but I think Tails Sky Patrol was supposed to be designed for a younger mindset. Not Sesame Street young, but close enough. The art style, specifically the enemy design, is super cutesy, like they belong in a Saturday morning anime. It certainly looks cute. But despite the length, Sky Patrol is surprisingly unforgiving. Tails' flight training under 100 times gravity has finally paid off as the kid can remain in the air much longer than he could do in any other game prior. Unfortunately, this is costing the use of his legs, for Tails can't even touch the ground without losing a life. If he even rubs against a wall, he loses a life. If he runs into an enemy, he'll stumble until you mash the buttons fast enough to recover, otherwise you touch the floor and lose a life. This is Miles Tails Prower in The Floor is Lava. Think of the game as a 2D space shooter, besides making sure you don't touch the dreaded grass. Tails defends himself with this trusty ring that can blow up all kinds of enemy resistance and help guide Tails through some tight corridors. For some reason, Tails never stops moving in Sky Patrol. You can only speed up or slow down to get through appropriate obstacles, and since Tails is so fragile, it's very much do or die in Sky Patrol, hence why I think it's so punishing. And to further add to that credence, Tails has limited stamina, spend too long in the air, and that'll kill you as well. But that's where his unhealthy addiction to mint candy comes into play. You eat these, you refill your flight meter. Mint candy is actually Tails' favorite food canonically, and now I can see why. It keeps him high. Ow! This shit right itself. Don't do drugs, kids. Four stages are all we have here in Sky Patrol, not counting the short tutorial level at the start. I find it funny that one of the stages here is named Rail Canyon, that the Sonic Heroes development team thought, fuck it, no one played this. Let's just reuse Rail Canyon for something else. Every stage has some unique obstacle, but the scenery is most often the largest change, and the difficulty sort of zigzags. Starts challenging, gets a bit easier, then gets even easier, and then mercilessly throws that brick wall at your fucking face. Now, candy is easy to come by, it's usually the walls that'll end up killing you and not the lack of stamina. No, not even the boss fights are much of a scuffle, you just endlessly deck them in the head with your ring until they give up and Tails abducts them to parts unknown. Sky Patrol is even less of a distraction than Sonic Chaos, I find. It pulls no punches in design given how much of a glass pigeon Tails is here, but even the most casual player can clear this in a short amount of time. Truth be told, I find it sort of exhilarating to speedrun through this. If there was one way I could recommend playing it, it's that way. Going fast in Sky Patrol feels more rewarding to me, which... I suppose works out, it's in the Sonic series after all, but you know, that's on the very off chance I happen to go back to this. And let's face it, after this video, I'm probably never going back to this again, say for a short let's play or maybe something charity related. Now this right here is the real meat of the video, I guess, it's still a pretty short one. Tails Adventure, and unlike Sky Patrol, this was given a North American release in the Game Gear. But serious question, who was still using their Game Gear in 1995? I mean, I guess I was, but I was only playing billiards and trying not to scream my ass off with Sonic 2. I still have my old Game Gear, thanks for only telling me this now, Elliot. I thought this shit was lost to the sands of time years ago. The billiards game is still inside, but I doubt it still works, and I don't feel like putting six AA batteries in this son of a bitch to find out. I'll get this baby working again at some point. Sentimental. Anyway, enough with the nostalgia. Tails is spending some time in solitude, relaxing his worries away, when suddenly his island is attacked by the invading Battle Cuckoo. I think it's pronounced Cuckoo, there's two Ks there. Though I wouldn't mind calling them Cuckoo, seeing as they're birds and all. Yeah, an Imperial fleet of birds have begun taking over Tails' little joint in search of the Chaos Emeralds, sending the young fox into action. Sure, the island's inhabitants need to be rescued and the Chaos Emeralds need to be found, but these assholes 
interrupted Tails' beauty sleep, and I'm sorry, they need to die. Being the mechanical genius he is, Tails begins putting that knowledge to work as he travels across the island collecting upgrades that'll help him wipe out the cuckoo scum. From a wide assortment of mobility upgrades, chaos thermals to extend his health, robotic dogs that can crawl through small tunnels and transform into a fucking submarine and battle plane! That's metal as shit, and I mean that literally, he's a robot. But to amp up how dead fucking serious Tails is committed to this mission, his default weapons are bombs. And there's more than one class, small explosives, timed explosives, large explosives, fucking napalm! Where was this? This tales in the adventure games. Well, speaking of adventure, and I know it's in the title of the game, but it's indicative of what you're doing here. It's not really a high speed 2D platformer. No, Tails isn't packing any speed here unless you get the running shoes because Tails needs an item to help him go fast in this game, and even then, it's not much faster than his default haters gotta hate walk. Tails can't even spin dash without getting an appropriate item for some reason, and that's the fastest you're gonna get in Tails Adventure because it's exactly that an adventure game. Pretty close to Metroidvania, there are no goalposts to run past, a lot of areas are interconnected, there's no special stages to unlock, Robotnik is once again absent. The point of Tales Adventure is to carefully explore your surroundings, destroy the battle cuckoo, and use your upgrades to continue your quest, be it by land, sea, or air, and so you lay waste to the Grand Commander of the Army. There's rings to collect, but Tails has a traditional health meter. You can refill it by grabbing more rings, which I recommend you do as some of these bastards are kind of annoying to hit. But for everything else, you can simply fly over them. Thankfully, between games, Tails has regained the use of his legs and won't die of cardiac arrest by touching a wall, but you still have a flight meter to keep an eye on. Chaos Emeralds hidden throughout the island can be collected to permanently increase both your health and flight. That's a concept I totally dig. You may not get a super form for collecting all six, but Tails is wise enough to get use out of them individually. Take some notes, you blue fuckboy. The Emeralds are completely optional though, not needed for a better ending, but get them anyway, who doesn't like extra health? You start with bombs and you'll be getting a lot of mileage out of them, because unlike the platformer, Sales can't solve his problems by jumping on shit. Everything must be handled with a specific tool, from different types of bombs, defensive shields, to that remote robot I mentioned earlier, but not every item has equal utility. The helmet makes you impervious to attack, but you can't move. The knuckles item is a pathetically short range punch that's awkward to hit with, and there's some I'm not even sure what function they serve without looking it up at a wiki. And some items are merely situational one-use tools, like the night scope. Use it to see inside this volcano. Nothing more to it than that. And I guess because Tails needs the constant noise, he also has a portable radio. Oh, I'm sorry, he has a portable radio. The island is home to several locations, some of which require specific items to fully see, which ends up unlocking more areas in the process, until you get to the point where you can take the battle to the Battle Cuckoo's Fortress. No area is super large, but it still requires some basic back and forth, though the island is certainly not lacking in visual diversity. Nothing is too taxing, not even a handful of dungeons. I love how this game makes Tails look like a total badass using the one asset he's known for, his high intellect. I enjoy that sort of design, especially when the game in question is actually decent, and this one is not bad at all. Tails' adventure pleasantly surprised me when I first played it, which wasn't that long ago. I volunteered to play the game for the Sonicathon I participated in a couple of years ago without ever really playing it. I'm sort of stupid like that. But I picked up the game, and yeah, I realized it wasn't a classic Sonic title, but it's still a remarkably solid game. It's an adventure game. I'm okay with the slow pace, and it's not even that slow. It's around a three hour game that's easy to pick up and understand. It's got enemies to blow up, bosses to destroy, a healthy amount of puzzle solving to keep your brain ticking. If it were a little longer, and if a larger number of upgrades had been put to better use, I think we could have had something really good here. As is, Tales Adventure is a fun little romp at its best, completely harmless at its worst. It's weird to think that this is one of the better Game Gear Sonic games, spin-off or otherwise. I'd love to see this formula attempted again on a bigger scale that's not named Shattered Crystal. A Sonic the Hedgehog themed Metroidvania starring Tails and his gadgets? I'd buy that, why not? The sky's the limit, and Tails is already close to breaking that limit if this game is anything to go by. Raiding the Battle Cuckoo's Fortress with a single battle plane, infiltrating the base with nothing but a spin dash and a robot dog, and laying waste to the Imperial fleet bringing the place down on a glorious glorious blaze, and what does Tails do afterwards? Doing what he does best, building shit. Though if you ask me, I think this would have been a more appropriate ending.